Good morning, chemistry students. We're going to go through and practice some of the new algebra equations we've used. So to start off, let's just review what those equations are. Please write them at the top of your paper. So the first equation we have is C equals lambda nu, and that means the speed of light C is equal to the wavelength of light lambda times the frequency nu. The constant for that equation, C, the speed of light, C will always be equal to 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. The second equation we have is E is equal to H nu. What this means is that energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of light. And Planck's constant is always equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, and the units there are joules times seconds or joule seconds. So we're going to use the colors um, from the hydrogen spectrum on a couple pages back, and we're going to go through and practice finding the wavelength, converting from nanometers to meters, solving for frequency, and then energy in joules. So if you flip back, I think it's about two pages, we are looking at this spectrum for hydrogen right here. So we're going to go through and figure out what each of these lines represent. We've got the purple line at 410, the blue line at 434, the kind of blue green at 486, and then the red orange at 656. So let's go through and just record all of those first. So um, the hydrogen color we're going to look at first. Let's kind of, so let's work in order um, from purple all the way through red. So we're going to start actually technically with violet. And the violet line, its wavelength was 410 nanometers. However, to use that in our equation, we need to convert it to meters. So we're going to set up our little fraction way of changing it. So we make it an improper fraction, put it over 1, and then we've got to figure out the conversion factor. We want to get rid of nanometers, so that means it has to come into the denominator of my next fraction. And I'm trying to get to meters, so that will go in the numerator. This right here is called the conversion factor, and it has to be equal to 1. So ask yourself, what's bigger, a meter or a nanometer? You're right, it's a meter. One meter is exactly a billion nanometers. And we can write a billion as one times 10 to the ninth. So right now I want you to pause the video, make sure you write this down and practice using this in your calculator, use that EE button, and then solve for the wavelength of nanometers, taking 410 times one over one times one times 10 to the ninth. Okay, so here's what you should have gotten. You should have gotten 4.10 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Now let's solve for frequency. If we have the equation C equals lambda nu, if I rearrange and solve that, I get the equation nu equals C, the speed of light, divided by lambda, and that's the wavelength in meters. So for this equation, I'm going to substitute in the speed of light is the constant. It is always 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and I'm going to divide it by the wavelength I had just found from the previous problem. So this number is going to come right over here. Divide that by 410, 4.10 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. I want you to again pause the video, take out your calculator, and plug this in and report it to the correct number of sig figs. Okay, so you should have gotten 7.32 times 10 to the 14th, and we're left with the units 1 over a second, which is also known as a hertz. Our final step is that we have to find energy in joules. So energy is always equal to, like we said before, Planck's constant times the frequency. So we need to get out our calculators again and take our answer from the previous problem, this frequency right here, times Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. Let's see if I have room to write that here. So I'm going to have energy equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. I know I'm kind of running out of room here, but we're going to squeeze it in, times the frequency, which is 7.32 times 10 to the 14th, and units are hertz or 1 over a second. I want you to pause, plug this into your calculator, and then check your work with mine. 
your final answer should be that energy is equal to 4.85 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Now, if you got the coefficient right on your calculator, you got the 4.85, that's good. But if you have the wrong exponent on your 10 to the power right here, that means something went wrong with your order of operations. So you need to take some more time and figure out exactly how the exponent button works on your calculator. So we've got three more examples we're going to work through. And by the end of this video, you should be a, a superstar at solving these algebraic equations. So the next line we have is blue. And that blue line is at 434 nanometers. Put that over 1. So let's do our conversion factor again. We want to get rid of nanometers. That means it has to come to the bottom of the next equation, next fraction. We want to get to meters. Ask yourself, what's larger, a meter or a nanometer? You're right, a meter is larger. So one meter is exactly a billion, or 1 times 10 to the ninth nanometers. Pause the video. I want you to do this problem right here in your calculator, and you should get exactly 4.34 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Now that we have our wavelength, we can solve for frequency, just like we did on the previous problem. Frequency is always equal to the speed of light, which will always, always, always be 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And now we're just going to divide that by our wavelength, which we converted into meters. So divide that by 4.34 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Pause the video, take out your own calculator, and let's solve and round for sig figs. You should have gotten 6.91 times 10 to the 14th and units are hertz or one over a second. Now let's look over here at our last step, energy. Same equation as we used on the last problem. Energy equals Planck's constant H, that number never changes, times the frequency that we had just solved for. So energy is going to be equal to 6.626, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, that's a kind of a weird derived unit, just go along with it for right now, times frequency, which we just solved for, and that was 6.91 times 10 to the 14th, one over a second. Again, please pause the video, type this into your calculator, and pay special attention to those exponents that you're typing in. And you should have gotten, for your final answer, 4.58 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And I've rounded that to three sig figs because our original problem, we had three sig figs. Oh, if you're worried about sig figs, this actually should have been 410 point to give us our third sig fig there. Okay, two more to go. Now we're gonna look at that kind of blue greenish one. Um, maybe you wanna call it teal. This is kind of the blue green line. Okay, so now let's look at the blue green line. That wavelength was exactly 486 nanometers. We need to convert that into meters, so make it your improper fraction, put it over one, and then set up your conversion factor. I want you to try this one on your own, so pause the video, fill in that conversion factor, and then type the final answer into your calculator. Perfect, if you got 4.86 times 10 to the negative 7th meters, you're doing great. Next step is to convert and figure out what our frequency is. So just like before, we're setting up our equation, Look at all your previous examples. I want you to set this one up, pause the video and solve it, and then come back and check and see if you did your work correctly. So if you got 6.17 times 10 to the 14th, one over a second or hertz for frequency, you're doing a great job. And again, remember, if you were getting the coefficient right, but your power of 10 is wrong, that just means you're not using your calculator correctly. Um, check out your calculator's user guide or come see me before or after school and we'll figure that out. And your last step, solve for energy. I want you to set this one up on your own, look at your equation, remember to plug in your constant, and use the frequency you just solved for. And so here your final answer, energy is 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And for the last line for the hydrogen spectrum, it is red. If you look back to two pages ago, the wavelength in nanometers was 656 nanometers. I want you to try this next whole row on your own, looking back at your previous examples, 
and using those equations you wrote at the top of your page and all the constants. Remember to show all your steps and then round for sig figs. Pause the video and then once you have all your work done, watch the video again for your final answers. Okay, so let's check back in. So for that last red line, you should have found that when you convert nanometers, you get 6.56 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. We use that wavelength, plug it into our frequency equation, and we find that the frequency is 4.57 times 10 to the 14th, one over a second or hertz. Use that frequency, plug it into your energy equation, and you get 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. I want you to make a note to yourself to remember this, that one over a second, that by definition is equal to one hertz, which we also abbreviate as HZ. So you should be familiar and understand that these three things, they all mean the same thing, and they're referring to how many wave cycles pass a point in a given amount of time. Last thing I want to do is compare all of these lines. So we have violet blue, blue greenish, and red. Which one of these has the highest energy? If you said violet, you're correct. If you look, 4.85 times 10 to the negative 19, that's your largest number. Violet light has the highest energy, and it also has the highest frequency, because frequency and energy are directly related. By contrast, violet has the smallest wavelength. So wavelength and frequency are indirectly related. A tiny wavelength means a large frequency and a high energy. So violet light has a lot more energy than red light does. If you look at red, it has the largest wavelength, but it has the lowest frequency and the lowest energy. So if you look at the whole electromagnetic spectrum, violet light is closest to UV light, and that's going towards the side of the spectrum that has a lot more energy. So I hope that after this video, you have learned how to solve for wavelength, converting from nanometers to meters, to solve for frequency using your calculated wavelength in meters, and then to solve for energy in joules. Remember, you will be given these equations and these constants. And always, always, always show all your work with your units and round for sig figs.